There we go, see that? Now this is my AR-15, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome to yet another episode of United Guns of America. I am your host, Brian Redman, and today we're doing something really cool. We're gonna be uh, actually setting up a Pelican 1720 uh, rifle case. Well, we're gonna use it as a rifle case. Um, so I did a video before uh, about Pelican cases and just talking about traveling with TSA and all that good stuff. But this particular one here is special because we have the case, but we have not cut it yet. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys how I prepare my Pelican cases. We're gonna do the layout, the foam, and all that kind of stuff. Now, what somebody's probably sitting there saying is like, okay, it's cool, I see the Pelican case, right? Got the Pelican case laid out, opened up the Pelican case. You see that the foam here is all brand new, right? So we're gonna do the outline for the foam, of course, but what are we outlining? It's like, man, right? What are we gonna outline? What is he gonna outline? Well, what I'm gonna outline today is my Barrett Rec 7, that's right, I said Barrett, Barrett Rec 7 SBR rifle with my suppressor on here. So we're gonna lay this guy on here, we're gonna go ahead and We'll outline everything. I'm gonna get my mags and all that good stuff in here. And then we're gonna have a great time laying this thing out and cutting it. And it's gonna look awesome. It's gonna be amazing. And it's gonna make everybody wanna get Pelican cases and Barrett Rec 7s. So I know this guy here seems pretty interesting. We will definitely be doing a video about this guy. This is my baby. Uh, I love this gun. This is one of the best buys of my life. Um, this is an awesome, awesome, piece of firearm uh, firepower here so we'll talk about this guy later but right now it's all about the pelican cases all about the pelican so we're gonna go ahead get this outline and stuff together I'm gonna have everything laid out here show you how to outline and we will be moving forward shortly so stay tuned okay so we're back so now we're getting ready to prep the foam for our tracing or our outlining of all the things that we're gonna put in here so we're first going to literally take the foam out and it guys just pops right out. Take that, then we're gonna move this case here. We're gonna close the top of this guy. I'm gonna snap that guy down, snap that guy down. Boom. All right, so one of the first things that you wanna do with this uh, foam is you want to outline the foam as far as just a rectangle or the outer shape, whatever it is, if it's square or whatever. You wanna put a like about an inch of a chalk outline so that you know that you won't go past that. Reason being is because when you're moving this, uh, your, your items in and out of that foam, if it's really close to the edge, the foam will begin to fray. So you don't wanna do that. So we wanna go ahead and we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna go about an inch. I got my tape measure here. I got a piece of chalk and we're just gonna take this. The reason why you use chalk some people you will see using video, doing this video, they'll do things like a magic marker, a Sharpie, or something like that. Um, one of the reasons why you don't want to do that is because if you make a mistake doing your outline, you don't want it to just be there. Now, some people will say, well, it really doesn't matter. You can flip it over. Yes, you can do that. Personally, I like the chalk because I think it's just a little bit easier to do. Uh, so we're basically just going to take this guy, and you're going to come here. I got it measured like an inch, just a tape measure, or you can get a piece of... Um, uh, measuring tape or something, like from a fabric, or whatever. You can just take this guy, put it on the end here, and you're just gonna follow along just like that. Doesn't have to be, you know, exactly the precise measurement, but you just wanna be able to eyeball it. And you're not gonna like cut this part, so it's gonna look something like this. So you're not gonna actually cut this, but you just wanna have this line there so that when you are mapping everything out, you know where you wanna stay and where you don't wanna go outside of that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this guy up here. And for you guys, it's probably gonna be like some really fast moving video footage, but I'm gonna really take my time and get this thing done. All right, so picking this back up, so I pretty much just did this outline here, 
And one of the great things about chalk is that if you mess up or if you need to re uh, go back and redo something, you can because eventually this will just wipe off. I can even take like a little wet paper towel or something if you want to make it really clean and just knock this stuff off. So this is only just a guideline that I have set up here. This is only just for me to stay within that. I don't have to measure like exactly up to that line, but I do know that I don't want to go like too far past it, okay? Because once we actually get this guy set up, we're going to treat this too. And the way that we're gonna treat it, uh, you'll see that it's gonna be awesome. And that's gonna help keep this foam nice and sturdy. And uh, it'll help keep it from fraying. So that's gonna be great. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to start mapping out and laying out our um, equipment that we're gonna put in here. recording so now we are at the point now to where we have pretty much our layout so I have my Barrett Rec 7 uh, AR-15 laid in here this is like the, the centerpiece that guy's right here I have my P mag 60 round drum in here as well then I have my Romeo 4c uh, red dot just right here um, I have two of my magazines here that are gonna go in here. These are 30 round P mags as well. So we're gonna have two here, and then I'm gonna slide these guys over, put another two there so I can carry a total of four, okay? So that's how those guys are gonna go. And then I also have my uh, Surefire uh, Mini Monster Suppressor sitting right in here as well. That'll go in there by uh, right next to my AR-15. Then here I have, I will have a spot for my Glock 17 or my Glock 22, whichever one I wanna carry. That'll go here. The magazine for uh, that Glock will go right next to it. And I caught that. Oh yeah, he got hands, you see me. And then I'll have my Beretta PX4 Storm, which is here with the magazine that goes with it as well. So next we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do the outline for these guys. Get everything outlined, we got everything mapped out. And that's pretty much what you wanna do. Also another tip, when you're doing this, uh, make sure that you put the bulk of your weight at the bottom part of your case. So this case, that Pelican case, it has two wheels on the bottom of it, I'll show you that. But you wanna make sure that you put your weighted items or your heaviest items at the back end cause that'll go at the bottom part of your case. And also too, I'll show you this as well, you want your case and the optics for your case to be uh, in a spot to where it's at the hinge of the case. So wherever the hinge of the case is, that's where you want your rifle to sit. So when you sit your, your case down, your rifle is sitting basically on the bottom part like that. It's not up top over your equipment. So when you set your case down this way, then that means that this part of the rifle is actually sitting down in your case just like that. So that's how your case sits. Another thing too is what I did as well. I don't put my optic, I don't wanna leave it mounted on there. I wanna have it separate because if something's moving around, even though these cases are extremely tight, uh, if something gets to moving around, I don't want it to hit my optic. So I want my optic in a spot to where it has its own little space, its own little nest, to where nothing's gonna mess with it, all right? And also too, last tip before we go to the next step, is you wanna make sure that you have space in between. So if you notice, there was like a good maybe inch, inch and a half, some in some areas to, that I have space in between. Did that again, wow, that's awesome. Uh, that space in between, uh, the items. So your items aren't really close together because you have to remember you're going to be moving stuff in and out of this over time, over the years, and the more you do it, then the more your foam will fray. But I'm going to show you a really cool way on how to treat your foam so it will definitely be able to stand the test of time and it will last. So definitely make sure that your space is good, make sure that your weight is uh, on one side, preferably towards the bottom of that case. So when you stand your case up this way, your weight is at the bottom because that's gonna help when you're wheeling things around. And also make sure that your rifle, the top part of your rifle is at the hinge or the spine of your case. Cool? So we're gonna now go ahead and start outlining this stuff, which is the cool part, get everything laid out, and then that's gonna be some 
fast camera stuff and then uh, we'll come back and then we'll go to the next step. Awesome. Okay, so we are back after the fast forward and all that good stuff. And pretty much what I did was I got everything outlined. Now, as you can see, this looks a little bit different than the original outline that I did when I laid everything out before I chalk lined everything. And one of the wonderful things about using the chalk is that you can actually change. You can change it up, switch it up. And I basically made an adjustment here in the, uh, in the area for my silencer and my optic. And I also did it here with my, um, my magazines and my two handguns. Reason why I did that is because I saved and gained a little bit more real estate for something future that I may add. I could add more magazines because I already have four. I could add uh, uh, more handgun magazines if I wanted to, or if I get another trinket or another something to add onto something, a red dot or whatever the case may be, I still have some extra real estate where I can slide those guys in there. So I came up and I was able to, uh, gain a little bit of real estate in this area this area here and even something here so that's one of the things that you want to do once you lay everything out you think about it you look at what you got see if you can move some stuff around get it in as tight as you can as long as you're keeping that distance in between items uh and then you go ahead and chalk it out and look at it so let's do that now so i'm going to just take everything off there's my ar and everything has been lightly dusted with some of the finest uh, Hello Kitty pink chalk that you can find. Yeah, don't judge me. Well, actually you should, but whatever. So I'm gonna take everything off here. Get you guys get a sight of this. There's my Max. Max. There's my Optic. There's my G17. My PX4 Storm. And those are both full size. There's my magazines. Let's do them and boom. And there is my suppressor. So. What does that look like? Well, I'll show you. Something pretty much similar to this here. This is what it looks like. So this pretty much is my outline, right? Now you're looking at this and you're saying, man, those lines are pretty thick and that's fine. Because when I'm gonna cut this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, first of all, cut on the inside of these lines because that secures my fit. That makes sure everything fits nice and tight. So even with this guy up here, everything will be on the inside. So that's why you can see like how my lines like lapped up top, I mean, uh, covered that top line, that main outline. That's why I did that. And if for some reason I see like maybe my hand got a little too far off here, I don't want to be that high up. I can just bring it down some when I'm coming through and I'm cutting with my electric knife, I can actually adjust for that. So you basically just want this to be just a general outline of what you're going to do. And then you'll go through and we'll start with the knife and we'll start cutting through and we'll get everything going here. Um, one of the main things that you're going to remember too, is that this line here, this little rectangle line, that line, don't cut that because you don't want to cut that out. All right, I'm just saying, somebody somewhere is going to be thinking in their mind, cut the line. And actually what I probably should have done, I should have maybe done this line in a different color because this is just a line, that line that goes all the way around, that line is just a marker to protect your edge, to make sure that you have a good, solid, and sturdy edge, okay? You can cut into it a little bit, but don't cut the line because then once you do that, this whole piece is gonna fall out of the middle. And we don't want that to happen. So uh, that's gonna be the next phase that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually get into the cutting aspect of this and we're gonna have the electric knife out and we're gonna get all that stuff together. We're gonna move some of this stuff. Well, I may leave it out, it looks, it looks cool. So I may just do that and then we'll go into the next step which will be cutting. Okay, so now we are at the point to where we've mapped out all of our hardware and we are getting ready to start to make the incisions for basically cutting the foam. Uh, so what we're gonna do first is you'll see, I have a knife here and it's just a regular knife and I'll use this to actually start um, the incision. So I'll start here, make the incision and then I will follow up with the actual cut with my electric knife. 
Now this is just your standard hay, uh, standard run of the mill, electric knife, whatever one that you're comfortable with, buying, they range anywhere between, I don't know, like maybe 12 to 40 bucks. So you get your electric knife, um, and then what we're gonna do is you'll see in the video, I'll just put this guy in, and then I'll just work my way slowly around. Usually I would say because of the uh, way that I'm cutting it, I'm gonna pretty much do it this way so that I can see what I'm doing, follow my lines. However, I do wanna make sure that I mention uh, two things. Number one, make sure that you do not cut the one inch spacer line that we put in. So this line here, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's there for just good measure to keep you from going too far to the edge because you don't wanna weaken the edge of your foam. So make sure that you don't cut a straight line down here because now your foam is gonna come out. You don't wanna do that. Make sure that you're only cutting the items, insides of the items. The other thing too, is to make sure that you're cutting on the inside of your line. And what that does is that makes sure that your fit is nice and snug. So when I outlined with the chalk earlier, you know, I was just pretty much doing a general thing, but when I actually make my incisions, I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the inside of this uh, chalk line. And I do that all the way around because that's gonna help me eyeball what it is that I'm doing. And it'll keep my items nice and snug when I get them in there because you want that fit to be nice and snug when you're holding your equipment so that when you're moving your case around, even though this is pretty solid, you want your foam to be pretty sturdy. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna make that first incision and Alrighty, so now we're here at the suppressor. Oh, that noise is just the worst. All right, so we got the foam pretty much cut out. Uh, I'm now gonna basically pluck the foam and then we're gonna put it back in here and we're gonna see how things look and see how things measure up. And here we go. So this is my D60 um, 60 round drum. Let's see, let's get that out of here. Sweet. Okay. And this is magazine. Now also too, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, when you look at the, um, when you look at the, uh, the lines that are on here, that little chalk, that stuff will come right off. And once we get into the uh, prepping stage for the actual foam, because we are gonna treat this foam, then you'll see that as well. I'm just going in and just working on little edges in here just so I can pluck these guys out. Just that simple there. Now, also too, with some of these foam inserts, there may be items that you have. So, well, what I'm gonna tell you first is, don't just throw the foam away because there may be items that you may have 
where you may not want them to be fully um, inserted into the phone. You may only want to go like halfway or something like that. Like if you wanted something to go right here, that's what that other piece of foam is for. It'll already be in the shape of the item that you're putting in there. You can literally cut it in half, cut it in a fourth, put that other piece in the bottom, and then that'll actually keep the item from sinking all the way in if you don't want it to. So, but most of this stuff, I believe, is gonna pretty much go all the way in. Maybe with the exception of the, nope, my optic will too. So I think they'll all go all the way in. So, pull that out, there we go. That's the suppressor there. That's my optic. Freeze, put your hands up. There we go. huh there we go see that now this is my ar-15 and no i'm just kidding <laughs> all right so we got the foam inserts cut out and pretty much this is how it looks from the back looks pretty good pretty smooth and this is how it looks from the front all right so now i could do this Put this guy like that, right? Or like this? Yeah, because that's where the wheels are. So my weight is going to be down here. So with this particular case, I can tell you why I actually flipped this the way that I did. With this case, <clears throat> I have the wheels at the bottom. So with the wheels being at the bottom of this case, I got my weight at this end, at the bottom of it. So my drum, my mags. Uh, that's going to be like what most of my weight is, especially if there's ammo in them. Uh, it's going to be at the bottom. Also, the butt of my rifle as well. So I know that when I have this here, it's going to be standing up just like this. Um, it'll be standing up and it'll be in there like this. Now, also, too, I don't know if I mentioned this. I think I did um, in the in the other video is that uh, the earlier part of the video, rather, is that if you have an optic on top, then you want to make sure that that optic on top is at the top of the rifle. So like it would be here and I would have cut it out to where it sat up top here. Because this optic that I have, which is a red dot, it's smaller. I made a cutout for it to just go right there. But if I had that optic mounted on here, let's say if this was like a big rifle or something, I would have had this, the gun would have been centered down a little bit more, but I would still want to keep the optic up top of the rifle because when this guy is closed, then if I turn it like this and I stand that case up and I'm carrying it this way, then the weight of the uh, optic, the weight of the gun or whatever would not be on top of the optic. The optic wouldn't be on the bottom. So you don't want that on the bottom. You want your optic up top by your hand. So that's what you wanna make sure that you do. Whenever you cut one and you're gonna keep your optic on the firearm, make sure that it's up by the handle so that you'll never have anything like pushing down on top of it. So um, I think now we are going to place everything back in here just to see how the sizing is. And we will go from there and see if we need to make any other adjustments. So, okay, so we've gone back, we've made those last few minor adjustments. And as you can see, everything is fitting in our foam beautifully. All right, so I got my guns in, my magazines, I got my optic in, my red dot here, I got my drums, my other two mags. I get my other two mags, I put those in there, and then I have my rifle with my suppressor. So, everything seems to be fitting beautifully. Uh, and we're pretty much ready to go. However, this is the part where some people who've done this before have stopped. I, on the other hand, I'm gonna go another level here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually going to take everything out of here and then I'm gonna take this foam and I'm actually going to treat it, all right? And I'm going to treat it with uh, some plastic dip, which I should actually have out, but I will do that once I get to the point to where I'm out in the garage and I'm gonna spray it down 
and I'm gonna put several coats on this. So that will be my next step. So we'll see you soon. Okay, so here we are. This is plastic dip. And what this is, is literally just spray on plastic. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give our foam, uh, it's gonna give it a sturdy texture so that when we're taking our things in and out of our foam, that it will be able to sustain and it won't begin to fray and it won't come apart. So we're gonna spray this. However, the thing, the trick to this is, is that it's not just about one coat, it's about several coats over time because it takes a little while for it to cure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply a coat and just show you how it goes on. Um, and then I'll come back several times. Now I wanted to do it in black. I have black, but I don't have enough. So because I'm putting on several coats, I'm gonna do a couple of coats of gray and then I should be able to finish up with black and think it's gonna look nice. So if I uh, think I should be able to do this, make sure that you have this in a place. I'm doing it actually in my garage, um, but it's you know pretty well ventilated. I can lift up my garage door. I'm literally just gonna spray this. It takes about maybe five or 10 minutes to do it. Spray it nice and even. Um, and then I'm just gonna walk away, man, and come back and do it over the next couple of hours, do it a few times. So here we go. That's the first coat. We're gonna give it about maybe, like I said, about 20, 30 minutes and I'll come back and I'll spray this a few more times. So within the next maybe hour or so, we'll have this thing all grayed out and then I'll finish with a black coat and we should be good to go. So, okay, so we're back. I've changed and uh, we're gonna finish the, uh, the layout here. So what we got going is we took the plastic dip like I showed you before and this is a, a few coats. Maybe I hit it about maybe four or five times. As you can see, it's nice and sturdy. The color's a little bit different. This is the original color, that, that gray, but with the plastic dip, I went with a uh, black. So that gave it the little two-tone that you see here. And you can see now that the foam is, uh, it's not as, as soft and cushiony as it is on the top here. It's got that nice coating, which is good because it's still firm and it'll protect your equipment and it will also uh, not fray on the ends. Now, one of the things that I um, do want to point out, and this is a really quick fix, um, and this is just for your own personal taste. So if you take a look here around these edges, you'll see that from me cutting with the knife here, some of these edges are a little frayed, you got the little ridges and things like that. What you can do is literally take like a Dremel tool, something like this here. Uh, I got it up like almost at about 30 um, and just the 30, what is it, 30,000 RPMs or something like that. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna literally just lightly just go over this and round out and smooth out some of the edges. I'm a stickler about it, so I'm probably gonna do mine, but I just wanted to demonstrate that's what you can do for those of you that are sticklers like me that want things to be perfect. So take your time with it, don't rush. I'm using the, um, the stone bit on here um, and it'll definitely take a lot of these ridges out. So we'll do a few, a little bit of it and see how it goes. So when it's spinning this fast, it's literally just like just shaving it off. Like I said, it's not gonna, um, you just take your time with it and you should pretty much get it, be able to get it to where you want it. I really just wanna focus on like the edges cause I want those to be really clean. So I'll just go and just pretty much like round this guy off like that. So we did have a snafu that I must point out. And that snafu was this. I didn't realize the depth of the 60 round drum. So I had to actually carve this part out in the second layer of the foam. And I simply did that with my Dremel. I took the stone tip that I had on the Dremel and I just literally like went down like to about maybe right there. And then I just did like a router thing and carved it on out and made it deep enough just in that part of the second layer. And now, should be able to put this guy nice and snug. So now it's pretty much flush with everything else. So <clears throat> I think we're done. It looks good. We have our 60 round PMAG uh, drum. We have our two 30 round PMAG drum, uh, not drums, but magazines. We'll get our other two in there once they uh, have been ordered. And then we have our Beretta PX4 Storm full size with the chrome slide. Yes, that's sexy. We have the 17 round magazine right there. We also have the Glock 17 Gen 4. 
uh, full size with the 17 round magazine as well. And then we have our, uh, what do I say, the cream, the cream of the crop, the uh, uh, top shelf. This is the Barrett Rex 7 uh, SBR short barrel uh, rifle chambered in 5.56 and 223. And we also have a Surefire Mini Monster Suppressor. And we also have a Romeo 4C Red Dot. So I think that we are good. I think we are ready to travel. Our Pelican case is ready to go. I would be able to close this guy now with no problem. And I think I can close this guy with no problem. Oh, wait. All right, boom. And we get that guy down, that guy down. Boom, we are ready to go. So when you're traveling, when you're flying through TSA or you're going somewhere where you gotta have some good protection for your equipment and your hardware, you can put your TSA locks right through this guy, take it through TSA with no problem. You can carry all of your hardware. Remember that this guy can be carried, but it also has these amazing wheels on the bottom here. Rolls beautifully. So I think with this guy here, let's set that guy down. I'm ready to go. I also have my, like I showed in the initial video, my other two smaller Pelican cases. These are just for my handguns here, the 1170s. I definitely will uh, say that I do like the Pelican cases. They are sturdy, they have the water seal, they're really great cases to protect, not just your firearms, but even if you have expensive camera equipment, um, any type of technology that is fragile, you can definitely put it in one of these cases and don't have to worry about it. So um, if you got any other questions or anything, please put it in the description box below. Let me know what you think about the case. Uh, if you got any other questions, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And hey, I appreciate you guys spending time with me. This is the United Guns of America channel. I am Brian Redmond. And as always, I hope that this helps somebody become a better something of themselves. I don't know, but <laughs> peace. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm out.